In total, the 15 richest Argentinians are estimated to be worth around $27 billion. Amazingly, just short of the $27.7 billion deposited in the country's central bank. They almost have more money than the bank. Well, it's one thing to have it, but how do they spend it? Let's meet some of Argentina's billionaires, shall we? According to Forbes, Marcos Galperin has a net worth of $6.4 billion US. The Argentinian billionaire businessman is best known as the co-founder, chairman, president and CEO of Mercado Libre. Mercado Libre has gone from being the eBay of Latin America to the Amazon of Latin America. Galperin majored in economics and finance at the University of Pennsylvania and got an MBA from Stanford University. In August 1999, he founded Mercado Libre Inc. And according to Comscore Networks, the Mercado Libre site is among the top 50 most visited sites in the world and is the leading retail platform in all 13 Latin American countries as well as Portugal. Mercado Libre started operating in Argentina where it still is based and has survived economic and political headwinds. Of course, the billionaire owns a private jet and he loves taking his family and dog on vacation all over the world. One of the richest billionaires from Argentina is Alberto Romers. His net worth is $2.2 billion US. He owns Romers Laboratories, the largest pharmaceutical company in Argentina. His father, Alberto, an immigrant from Germany to Argentina, founded the firm in 1921. In addition to its US operations, Romers Laboratory has operations in Brazil, Uruguay, and Mexico. The company manufactures medicines such as antibiotics and anti-inflammatory drugs. He's a big fan of all things luxurious, including his massive sailing yacht named Azura. The yacht has now celebrated 10 seasons on the TP-52 circuit. Here's some Argentinian gossip for you. Romers was a partner of Joseph Luis Moreno, a famous television producer, comedian, and ventriloquist who produced a television series, Resplendor y Tinieblas, produced by Dreamlight International Productions. According to the businessman, he was cheated out of more than 32 million euros by the production of the series. Never trust a ventriloquist. The billionaire admires the life of St. Francis of Assisi, which Moreno and Romers aim to make into a mega production in 2018 with Dreamlight. The series was scheduled to run for four seasons, with recording locations in Italy, Spain, France and Egypt, as well as a cast of over 1,500 actors and actresses. Filming has begun, but everything now is at a halfway point. It is now believed that some of that 32 million euros was diverted for another purpose. Moreno's attorneys also requested an embargo on the assets of Martin Mester, a Czech bodybuilder and actor who was a former friend of Moreno's, and might have bought a mansion in Prague with money suspected to be from the Argentinian businessman. Currently in the courts now, we'll see what happens with that. One of the most important businessmen in Argentina is Alexander Bulgaroni, president of Pan American Energy. He's worth close to $2 billion. Bloomberg considered him one of the most influential people in Latin America, as the Argentine energy company PAE is the region's leading company. Their activities include exploring and producing oil and gas, refining and commercializing fuels, lubricants and chemicals. His big score was in 2011, when him and his brother sold a 50% stake in Breedis to China's state overseas oil company CNOOC for $3.1 billion. Alexander's brother, Carlos, is a billionaire too. Him and his wife, Natalia, purchased a luxurious property in Georgetown, a corner residence at 3053 P Street. The $7 million home comes with nine bedrooms, seven bathrooms, a garden, a pool, ample parking, and a garage. Gotta love the ample parking. Originally, it was listed for $12 million, so it looks like he got himself a deal. Carlos is also considered to be one of Argentina's richest men. He has homes in Buenos Aires and Rome. Breedis Corporation, the largest privately owned oil and gas exploration company in Argentina, was founded by his family. 
The oil tycoon has a wine empire too, launching Patagonia's first ice wine. The first time Alejandro saw the 2,200 hectare property for sale in rural Garzon, well, he just had to have it. It's just north of Uruguay's beach resort of Punta del Este, and it reminded him of Tuscany because of the green hills. He says the place was magical, and he had to have it. And when a billionaire wants something, well, they get it. Besides an open flame restaurant, the estate has 500 acres of vines planted in 1,000 blocks. As part of the $85 million project, there is an upcoming luxury hotel and wine club with a membership entry fee of $180,000 US. That better include an open bar. Bulgaroni is the first South American billionaire to establish such an extensive international wine business and has been able to do so in a remarkably short period of time. When he acquired the winery, he admitted he wasn't a big wine drinker. After he married his wife, he had to quit for 20 years as she didn't like the smell of alcohol on his breath. Well, now he has a killer excuse to drink. Hey, he has to try it, right? He does have a passion for wine, however, and it's not just a trophy property like the Bordeaux Chateau Montrose, owned by the French Bourgeois brothers. Instead, Volgaroni jumped into the business headfirst and he immersed himself in it. Let's move to another Argentinian billionaire. Gregorio Perez Camponc is one of the most important businessmen in Argentina, founder and president of the Perez Camponc Group. Moreover, he has undertaken some important philanthropic work related to education and health. The company has donated between 50 and 80 million dollars for the Pilar University campus at the Austral University, which consists of a complex for the university's medical clinic. Perez Compunc Family Group is a holding company based in Argentina that operates in three main areas, food, agriculture, and energy. He's a man that loves his cars too. He has a large collection of vehicles from all eras, but definitely has a weakness for those with a prancing horse as the insignia. His son Perez races cars. In 2018, he participated in the historical Argentina Grand Prix with a 350 Shelby Mustang GT from 1968. This, of course, was from his dad's exclusive collection, but he was also the navigator in the WRC in the remote Dakar Rally Classic. From racing to European football. Okay, Lionel Messi isn't a billionaire yet, but by our count, he has earned around $900 million in salary to date. He is the second highest paid athlete in the world at $130 million, behind Conor McGregor's $180 million. There was some serious drama last year when the Argentinian superstar soccer player tried to leave his team, Barcelona. The melodrama was punctuated by a leaked contract showing the cash-strapped club is paying him far more than previously believed. In addition to sponsorships, he has a clothing line designed by Ginny Hilfiger, sister of Tommy Hilfiger, and a lifetime deal with Adidas. Messi purchased a home for $2 million in Pedrables in Barcelona in 2009. He then spent millions upgrading and renovating the home. It is estimated the home is worth now between seven and ten million dollars today. Messi still owns a home on the exclusive Bellamar residential estate in Casteldefels near the Catalan capital. Messi bought a condo in Miami for $5 million in November 2019, and then a different Miami building sold him the entire ninth floor for $7.3 million in April 2001. But that's not all, as he also bought this massive mansion for $4 million. Messi and his wife will now call home this gigantic mansion known as the Fortress whenever they return to Argentina on three adjoining plots of land in a gated private estate just outside the footballer's hometown of Rosario. The monster property has a cinema, gym, and underground garage with enough room for 15 cars. The property has between 20 and 25 rooms, and there's still work to be done on a third part of the property, which is only for guests to stay in. According to reports, Messi and his wife furnished the house with furniture from Israel Milan and Paris. As everyone is always trying to snap a shot of the star, privacy is important to him. 
Good thing the former owners of the property planted three Texas ebony trees on the edge of their property, where a neighbor's balcony overlooks their swimming pool. Nice try, neighbor. Kentucky is a wealthy neighborhood in Rosario. Take a look at these pictures to see why it's called the fortress. When you're this rich, it's okay to be a little vain once in a while, right? Well, it seems Messi would agree. A giant floor-to-ceiling portrait of him wearing the number 10 Argentina shirt greets visitors entering the property in the entrance hall. Messi has a massive car collection too. This is an impressive garage. Let's take a look. Supercars and luxury vehicles make up Messi's impressive car collection. And depending on when you ask him, he owns between 10 to 15 cars. And as you'd expect, they're anything but ordinary. Messi appears to favor Italian automakers. The Spider is an open top version of the F430. The Ferrari F430 Spider was unveiled in 2005, and its sleek design is iconic to the Ferrari brand. Powered by 503 horsepower, this powerhouse provides stunning speed and performance. You gotta love the SLS AMG's gull wing door design, which brings to mind classic DeLoreans, but with a modern twist and earns its title as a super light sports car. Among the other standouts are his Pagani Zonda Tricolor, a Maserati Gran Turismo, an Audi R8 Spider V10, and a couple Range Rovers and four Audis, including an Audi RS6 Avant. Perhaps if Messi wanted to take a road trip in one of his sports cars, he would speed off to the Vines Resort and Spa in Mendoza. The resort and spa is situated in the heart of Argentina's wine country, just a few hundred meters from the largest winery in the country. A stay in this paradise starts at about $1,000 US and includes 21 villas, traditional open flame cooking, and award-winning vintages. There is also excellent food and obviously great wine, a state-of-the-art pool, blend your own wine excursions, as well as options for hiking and horsebacking. There's nothing like riding in the Andes. In addition, there is a fitness center, yoga classes, and other health-oriented treatments available. I want to go. If Messi wanted to take a staycation, he would stay here. Hey, if you have the money, you might as well live like the rich and famous at the Elvar Palace Hotel, one of the best places to stay in Buenos Aires, the capital city and largest city in Argentina. Room rates start about $400 US, but they can get drastically more expensive if you wish to upgrade. Guests can choose the size of their suite, ranging from the Palace Classic single bed hotel room all the way up to the Grand Luxury Suite. In addition to its spa, the hotel offers a fitness center as well as relaxation and beauty programs. It has pools and solariums as well. For dining in, guests can choose from contemporary Argentinian cuisine at the Alvira Grill or a full-service classical dining lounge at L'Orangerie. Oh, and you must indulge in a nightcap at the hotel's famous Alvir Roof Bar after a five-star meal. Heck, you can bring your whole multi-million dollar company if you wish. The hotel has 10 beautiful meeting rooms with a capacity ranging from 10 to 800 people. If you're looking for something remote, this is the place for you. And it's full of luxury. It's the Arakur Ushuaia Hotel. In this castle in the Andes, you will find first-class services and an incredible, breathtaking view from the glass-walled lobby. It's got a buffet breakfast and a noise-free business center. Guided hiking tours and a city shuttle are also available. It's got pools and gyms and even a ski shuttle service. Room rates start at about $300 US a night, but they get quite more expensive after the base rooms but they still include access to the reserve, all of its amenities, and even full-scale musical productions performed by the resort itself. If you have the passion for wine and the bucks, well, you should head straight to Casa de Uco Vineyards and Wine Resort in Mendoza, Argentina. Located in the center of the city, Casa de Uco is a beautiful modern building built in harmony with the landscape around it. Just check out these views. Many of the hotel's customers become repeat clients, and perhaps you will too. 
the staff is incredibly friendly and have a strong commitment to the traditional code of hospitality. Room rates start at about $400 US, but again, the prices jump substantially as you upgrade your experience. The resort offers a full service spa and gorgeous views of the surrounding countryside. They even have an archery. You'll definitely hit the bullseye when it comes to dinner, where their farm to table sustainability is a hallmark of their restaurants. They of course have their own wineries and vineyards that can be toured. Another great place to stay if you're into that kind of Argentinian remote luxury is the Yao Yao Hotel and Resort in Bariloche. Yao Yao is a resort that embraces rugged luxury. Hotel rooms start about $300 US per night at this Gocho inspired resort with a park, 18 holes of golf, five restaurants and a park. There are several hundred rooms of this hunting lodge style resort, a concierge and a medical staff on site, and loads of activities both indoors and out. And it sits on some gorgeous lakes that are just waiting to be explored. Let's end our trip to Argentina at the Feina Luxury Hotel in Buenos Aires. There is a world famous hotel located just a few blocks from Elvar that offers incredible service and fantastic accommodations. The Faena boasts delicious food, professional tango dancers, and a gorgeous theatrical design that will make you feel like you're on the red carpet. The guest rooms range in size from singles and duplexes to lofty studios and deluxe signature suites, two full service restaurants, several bars, and a highly acclaimed spa are available at the resort. Classic Spanish cuisine is served at the Bistro Sur and al fresco dining in the traditional terracotta oven is served at El Mercado. The hotel has three bars, including the electronic library lounge, the tango-themed cabaret club bar, and the pool bar. To cure the hangover, indulge in a relaxing steam session or have a relaxing treatment at the spa. So, billionaires from Argentina aside, the country itself has a thriving tourism culture that you should check out regardless of the money. Their dedication to luxury hospitality makes travel to Argentina an absolute joy. So, what are you waiting for? Vamanos!